thanks for coming. It's, it's a bit of a bigger crowd than, than we've been used to the last several meetings. First of all, there was a negotiating meeting at uh, the union offices today. There were 23 players present. Uh, you see who they are along with union staff. On the club side, we had the commissioner, Bill Daly, four owners, two general managers, and assorted staff. It was a big meeting, but we think appropriately so. Today, the players made a proposal on the core economic issues, which we believe should lead to a new CBA. Um, players did not believe that the owner's initial proposal uh, was appropriate or likely to do that. So we worked for a long time to try and develop an alternative proposal. And that's not surprising, I think, given the fact that we needed to review significant amounts of NHL financial information before we could feel comfortable in the proposal we made. We've gone through a lot of the information that we've been provided to date. We still have more work to do, and there still remains more information which is forthcoming. That said, we do believe that the proposal the players made today, um, once implemented, can produce a stable industry, one that going forward can give us a chance to move beyond the recurring labor strife that has plagued the NHL for the last two decades. Players want a new CBA and they want it soon, but obviously it has to be one which is fair and equitable to the players as well as to the owners. Under our alternative proposal, essentially the players have indicated that they would take a reduced share of HRR going forward for the next three seasons. That would be based on a reduction from what would be produced otherwise under the current formula with the league growing at traditional rates that it has for the last seven years. If league revenues grow, if HRR grows at the average rate as it has under this last agreement for the next three years, we estimate the amount of reduced player compensation over that three-year period to be about $465 million. If indeed the NHL grows at the rate that it has the last couple of years, which have both been fairly strong years, then it would be much more than that. Conceivably, it could reach um, about $800 million. We also propose significantly expanded, more aggressive, and more targeted revenue sharing. And the purpose of this is to help clubs and ownership groups which may need it. Under our proposal, revenue sharing could reach and probably would reach more than a quarter of a billion dollars per year. In essence, when you boil it all down, what we're suggesting is that the players partner with the financially stronger owners to help stabilize the industry and assist the less financially strong ownership groups. Our proposal also has facets in it which are designed to give the clubs and particularly the general managers and club presidents more flexibility in putting teams together. It has provisions designed to create incentives to grow local revenues as well as national revenues. In short, we propose fixing the problems which may exist, not fixing problems which don't. At the end of three years, under our proposal, the players would have an option for a fourth, which if they exercised it would revert back to or snap back to the current agreement. Commissioner indicated to the players um, before the owners left today that they wanted to take time to study our proposal, to run the numbers before getting back to us, which may happen as soon as tomorrow or at a later date if it takes them a little longer. That's not unexpected. It's certainly appropriate, as you know from my prior comments in response to proposals that were made by the owners, um, you can't turn it around. It took us quite a while to put this together, and it'll take them at least some time in order to understand it and to be in a position to respond to it. So we look forward to getting back together uh, with them, whether it's tomorrow or at the next convenient date that they're prepared to do it. Um, with that, I'll be pleased to try and answer some questions. I do not intend to go through the proposal line by line or give you all the details on it, however, if there are any. Yes? No, it is, the question was, 
is it fair to interpret that there would no longer be a hard cap under this proposal? And the answer to that is, is no, it's not fair to interpret that. There are a couple of small exceptions to it, but they're very limited and very defined and wouldn't affect the overall player's share and so on. Um, it will not surprise you that there are a number of people who wondered um, if the way to solve any problems would be to eliminate the salary cap and let each club pay based on its own resources and control its own budgets with enhanced revenue sharing. But uh, the owners, as you well know, um, are not interested or have not indicated an interest in that approach. And our desire is to try and make an agreement. So we made the proposal that we did. Just to clarify, there will still be a hard cap or some version of a hard cap? Yes. Yes. question was, why are we willing to give up some hockey-related revenue with the owners making so much money? The answer to that, I think, is twofold. One of which is that regardless of how you view the industry as a whole, it may be that there are some individual franchises in cities which need some attention. First of all, the owners have certainly indicated to us that they believe that is true. And so what we wanted to do was try, as you, you should in bargaining, address the concerns that um, are given to you if you believe that you can do so, consistent with your obligations to your own constituents and negotiating a fair deal. But best I can give you without getting into the specific information, which I can't do for a number of reasons. In return for giving up hockey-related revenue, are you asking for the NHL to uh, maintain the seven years under the free agency and anything like that? We have proposed that there be no changes uh, in any significant way to the player contracting rules. We have a couple of things that we're going to get back to them on that we're still working on, but essentially the current system would not be modified. John, can you tell us a bit about the process of getting to this moment and how this was put together? Process of getting to this moment. That's the question. Can I tell you a little bit about the process? Um, well, it, it doesn't happen in this way chronologically. But what you do at the beginning, to go all the way back, is you study the agreements, you study the way it's worked, you try and anticipate and to analyze what would have happened if different proposals were in place, different contract agreements were in place. Then you discuss that with the players. And as some of you know, I have spent an awful lot of time on the road the last two years meeting with players, going over issues, discussing circumstances, giving them our best view on staff as to what the, the critical items are, and hearing their own views. Then you get into bargaining. You hear what the owners have to say. You get the information. You analyze it. You come up with some recommendations, and you go back to the membership. I think over the last two or three days, various members on staff have spoken to something more than a third of all the players in the NHL. Just in the last two or three days, it's about the ideas that we have. And as you can see from the group that's here and the group that's attended prior meetings, players are involved knowledgeable and understanding. Once you get a consensus, then you fine tune based on the um, reaction you get from the constituency and you make the proposal. There is a longer version, but it's really longer. Yes? After your alternative proposal, what was the commissioner's reaction and how often does they argue that you can avoid a lockout this point? Um, well, let me say a couple of things about that. Um, first of all, I'm out of the prediction game. I've been out of the prediction game for 25 years. I'm not going to do that. Players certainly hope that there's no lockout. As I've indicated before, they're prepared to continue negotiating until we get an agreement and not shut the season down. They want to play every bit as much as the fans want to watch them play. So we certainly hope that's the, the rule. Secondly, in terms of the reaction, I'll let the commissioner speak for himself. I don't want to speak for him. I'm sorry. In a, in a couple of minutes, if, if guys want to say something, they will. I want to get out of the way first if there's any more to me. Okay? Question was, how would we characterize the talks? I think they're, they're pretty frank. You know, they're, they're pretty direct. They're pretty to the point. Um, I don't know if any of you have, have covered, I'm sure most of you have read stories about diplomatic negotiations in which people talk about frank and businesslike, and it's somewhere between there and cordial. It's, it's certainly professional. It's certainly people that know what they're doing, but we obviously represent different constituencies, and we don't see the world the same way. Okay. 
how long in time. The question was, how long was the presentation today? Um, I think it was about a half an hour in terms of the presentation we made, but we also gave them um, a written document which has a lot of information in it, which both fleshes out and amplifies and makes more precise the oral comments. I don't know how to evaluate that. And we've also, as, as the clubs did in connection with their proposal, have made available our number crunchers to meet with theirs to make sure there's no misunderstanding about the numbers. That's the player's proposal, yes. Why is that? Why would you want to have because we have a transition period in which the players are making significant concessions in a way to work our way through these problems. As Gary has, has often said, and correctly so, nothing lasts forever. That's the player's proposal. That the players are making significant concessions, and after a period of time, uh, we ought to be in a position in which it's no longer needed. Okay. All right. Do you want to say anything? I'm not compelling we you. Can, we can break off. Yeah. All right. <laughs> All right. Why don't you let them break off individually for now if you want to? Okay. All right. Thanks, guys. <laughs> <laughs>